So earlier when you brought up, you brought up an interesting topic. It was like fine art versus commercial art. And uh, I'm like a, I'm a product of both. My father being an extreme commercial artist. And then I have my mom who's like, I think fine art, you know? I, I've lived with both my whole life, so I kind of know the pros and cons of each one. And what are your thoughts on the two gangs? That's the best way to talk about it, man. It's like two gangs. It's like they don't understand each other. They don't like each other. Um, they got different sets of rules with, which, with both. And they're confused by, by each other. So the fine art folk go to a school somewhere, they get a degree, and uh, they attempt to follow what academia says is the direction you should go and what trajectory you should go on to promote your work as an artist. It may include uh, remaining a traditionalist. It may be um, a particular view on reproductions and how to do that or whether to do that. It may be uh, entrusting your career to um, other people to represent, or um, you know, it's just a tightly structured environment. The commercial realm is different. You know, you got commercial artists, you got illustrators, and then in 1995 there was this movement of artists that, for the most part, broke away from that traditional thing and started selling their works to the masses. Those two gangs are totally different and they don't respect one another. So one thing sees up here and the other one is supposed to be down here. Um, I go back to sc uh, art school when I applied to go to MICA. Um, I kind of wish they had did what they did the Matrix when they said, hey, blue pill, red pill, choose which one you want to be, you know, because me choosing to be a commercial artist, that program wasn't discounted because I took commercial art versus fine. Our programs cost the same amount to go to school. But when you graduate, one goes down here and the other one's supposed to go right. I, don't, I never could understand why that would happen, you know? So I think a lot of people are confused about that. Um, you'll find that most people who are on the fine art side end up becoming educators. And I think that's the hook is that people who are indoctrinated through academia end up going back into that system <laughs> and rely on that system, whereas those that are outside of that system, we are, we're dealing with agencies, we're dealing with personal clients, we, we, we have a, a, a larger reach. If you were a fine artist, it, it's not intended for you to be exposed to the masses. You would have art dealers and museums and galleries that re represent you. You may never be seen and people are not interested in you. They're more interested in your work and who's representing you. Whereas on the other side, it's just the polar opposite. You're dealing with the public, you're dealing with retail people. You are like a low level celebrity. So people want to see me and engage in you and your work. So I say all that say, you got to know what color bandana you're supposed to be wearing. <laughs> just like the Matrix, man. You pick which pill works for you. And then once you pick that pill, be ready for whatever that comes, comes with it. Because there'd be some pros and cons on both sides. Now, have I found an artist that is working the, the tightrope of doing both? Absolutely. Paul Goodnight's one. Joe Holston's one. Um, I, I think you should watch those two very, very closely. But once you make up your mind, just understand that certain things won't be available to you. And like I always said, man, my famous quote that I want them to put on my tombstone is, I'd rather be in 350,000 homes than one museum. Mm -hmm.